here with the top eight things coming to Disney World Florida in the next five years. So in the summer of 2024 at the D23 conference, Disney had some pretty impressive announcements about things, new projects that are coming uh, to the world's largest theme park resort in the next five years. And he basically said, Josh Tomorrow, uh, uh, the park's president, basically said, these are not blue sky things. These are things that are going to be shovels in the ground within the next five years. And most of them should be open in the next five years. Uh, maybe one or two will take a little bit after that. But let's dive in. Uh, we'll get into some of the opening dates for the stuff we do have. But again, this is ranked from eight to one, from eight, and we'll stop at the top one. And we'll even have an honorable mention along the way. But let's start with number eight, uh, Test Track. So this was announced way ahead of time of the D23. Uh, Disney closed uh, the Test Track ride earlier in 2024. And they basically said, hey, we're going to open with the opening next year with a re-theme. And it's going to be a throwback. There's going to be some world of motion and some other, uh, you know, previous versions of the ride incorporated into the experience. Uh, making it fresh by going backwards, uh, it does make sense for people that are nostalgic, which is a big part of that Disney group uh, who sort of miss when their favorite attractions go away. And uh, again, it's going to be the same ride and because it's op basically open within a year. Uh, late 2025 is what they said at D23. It does mean that, you know, it's not going to be a massive overhaul, just sort of changing things around inside. It'll probably be the same course layout and everything. Maybe the pre-show will change. I, I imagine it will. Uh, but let's see what we get out of that. Uh, but in the meantime, that is one thing that's happening. Uh, Test Track 2025 will be the eighth uh, most anticipated attraction in the next five years. Number seven is the first of the three attractions that will happen in the new Tropical Americas Park. And this is in the Dino Land USA section of the Disney World's Animal Kingdom Park, the fourth park that Disney built, the last park that Disney has built, uh, but clearly one that's uh, usually with, with attendance-wise, it hasn't always been up there uh, until it started opening Everest and it opened some more attractions and, and, and obviously uh, the Avatar world really opened up stuff for them. But this, uh, so Tropical America is just a retheme instead of a dino dig. Uh, so basically, you know, a, a archaeology, archaeology students, archaeological students out there, uh, you know, having some fun time. And it's going to have more of a theme, Tropical Americas, as you're going to be going into the Latin America, checking out things uh, within the continent. And the whole 11-acre land is basically themed to this town called Pueblo Esperanza, uh, which is Spanish for Town of Hope. And I'm sure Disney hopes that this town uh, will bring people back uh, to, to Disney's Animal Kingdom. And the, the sep so the number seven on this list is one of the three attractions there, and it's basically a carousel. But uh, while there are carousels uh, everywhere, Disney has obviously the, the you know the main flagship carousel at the Magic Kingdom, and even the Carousel of Progress. They don't really have a lot of carousel rides uh, within the actual Disney World Park, Disney World theme parks itself. But this is going to be a traditional carousel, but not so traditional. The theme is basically that you know a wood carver um, at, that lives in Pueblo Esperanza uh, likes to carve out you know animals, uh, and these animals happen to be Disney characters. So Filling, fitting in with the Animal Kingdom theme, you're getting animals, popular animals, and maybe not so popular animals, but you know definitely cult favorite animals uh, from Disney animated features. And you'll be able to, they'll all be different. So you just pick your favorite uh, if it's available and you just, uh, you know, take a, take a twirl around this carousel. So a classic carousel, but again, a great place for, uh, for all families uh, to enjoy. And uh, definitely it'll be a nice addition. This is uh, basically um, going to take over the digs area, the, the boneyard uh, where kids would play. Obviously, some parents may be complaining about the fact that, you know, a three minute carousel ride is not the same as being able for kids to, you know, run off and you know, burn off energy uh, for a good half hour uh, exploring the whole boneyard before before heading home or taking a nap or something. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is a visual uh, improvement. It will be an exciting thing, and it'll be a ride. Uh, again, it's just an attraction. This is the seventh most anticipated new attraction coming to the Disney World Parks. Number six, Zootopia Better Together. So this is replacing, this is also in Animal Kingdom. Uh, actually, four of these things are, all, are in Animal Kingdom. Uh, but So the Zootopia is going to take over where it's tough to be a bug, based on Pixar's A Bug's Life movie. And again, I think that's it's been long overdue. While that was an original attraction uh, that opened with Animal Kingdom, when it opened with the park 25 years ago, it, this is the kind of attraction where it's very polarizing. It's the kind of ride that really freaks out a lot of people with the spiders crawling down, the stingers uh, hitting you in the back, the cockroaches basically scurling, you know, under your bum uh, and your bum and your back leg uh, while you're 
basically right before you're about to leave the theater. So there's a lot of things there that are, you know, they're, they're interesting and some people love them. But again, some people dread them. And obviously, Zootopia Better Together is probably not going to be that same kind of shocking experience. But again, it will be another animal-themed attraction going into Animal Kingdom uh, based on the popular Zootopia movie, which is getting a sequel. And just so you know, this is a, a Zootopia. While the carousel is opening in 2027, I did not say that, uh, the Zootopia Better Together will open next year. So 2025 we're getting the Zootopia Better Together replacement. It'll probably just be a new film uh, based on that, but definitely different animatronics. Uh, no more of the Bugs Life characters uh, should be entertaining. Number five, this is where things start to get good, all right? Uh, this is the Indiana Jones ride. So this is taken over uh, the dinosaur ride, uh, which used to be Countdown to Extinction before Disney put out the dinosaur movie and said, oh, let's just theme it the dinosaur movie. Uh, let's go all in with that. And Again, if you've ever been on the Anna Jones ride at Disneyland, uh, it's it's a far superior ride. And I say this knowing full well that it is the same ride vehicle. It is the same track. But somehow the Indiana Jones ride feels more immersive. It's not just this dark experience uh, with basically a lot of dark lights and neons that you get in the dinosaur ride. <coughs> a more complete ride uh, than, than what we have here in Florida. So I'm looking forward to the change, but it won't be a copy of that ride. And that's also cool, too. So if you go to Disneyland, you can say, oh, I've done this one. No, this is an entirely different different experience. And again, it's trying to set itself in Latin America. So in this case, it's a Mayan temple. So Mayan temple. So instead of the, the institute, uh, the science institute that, uh, uh, that you would walk into in, in Dinosaur, it's basically a, a, t a temple, like a pyramid. And the theme here is basically that Indiana Jones hears that there's a mythical creature inside this temple, and you're going to go uh, with him the first time he goes in and explore it. So uh, obviously, again, once again, trying to wedge an animal theme into this. But, uh, you know, it, it's going to be probably be a great ride just because the, the track course works. All the weaknesses of the dinosaur ride, um, while they did sort of paint it up and add some new scenes over the years, it's still, you know, pretty flat compared to the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland, at least to me and most people. So I'm definitely looking forward to that change. Number four is the th third ride. So this is the, the Zootopia was going in the, in the tropical Americas, the carousel. And the third one, which is number five on this list, is uh, number four on this list is the Encanto ride. So um, obviously the Encanto movie has become very popular uh, for its soundtrack, uh, but also for the movie and the themes. And it's you're going to be basically going into the, the Encanto house, the casita. Um, and it's uh, happening on a day. The setting is that Antonio, who is the youngest family member, uh, receives a special gift. And if you saw the movie, you know that his gift is to communicate with animals. But this isn't Dr. Doolittle. This is a wonderful, uh, mystical, uh, magical place uh, um, it, it happening uh, in, in, in the whole casita, the whole Encanto uh, ride. And you're basically, you're, you're, it's a, so this is a sit down ride. You will sit down and you'll go through the different rooms in the house. And I know you're thinking you're, a car that's going to go through. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a much bigger house in the capacity than you, capacity you saw in the house. But you'll be going through the different rooms. And obviously it concludes in the final room. You're in Antonio's room when he's receiving his gift. And then the animals will start communicating. And I trust Disney to pull this off. Again, this is the kind of thing where uh, it, it, all this technology has gone into dark rides. All these things are happening. I don't think they will phone this in, especially with, with the Encanto uh, property doing so well for them. Number three, and here's where we start getting to some of the thrill rides. Uh, I know the Indiana Jones ride is sort of a thrill ride, and so is the test track, obviously. But let's start getting to the real cool stuff. Monsters Incorporated is getting that ride that ever since you saw the first Monsters Incorporated ride when they're in that dream room, when they're actually going through all the closet doors or all the, the room doors that are going through, uh, you're saying, man, how cool would it be to be, you know, it basically like it's uh, like a it's like a dry cleaning place with all the clothes racks, and based, except here it's just basically a bunch of doors, the, the closet doors, and it's happening. Uh, it's an inverted roller coaster, the first Disney's first uh, inverted suspended coaster rather, and at any Disney park, and you're going to go in there, you're going to go in the factory, you're going to go check stuff out. They haven't given up too much of the plot or whatever happens, but it's going to be a thrill ride, but it's going to be a, probably a family-friendly thrill ride, so not like the most intense roller coaster at Disney World. And especially uh, within Disney's Hollywood Studios, you're probably going to get more thrills at uh, you know the rock and roller coaster uh, than you would at the Monsters Incorporated Laugh Floor. I'm sorry, Monsters Incorporated Roller Coaster, which is yet to be named, but Laugh Floor is obviously at the Magic Kingdom. That's number three. So again, it's going to be a roller coaster, um, one of the two roller coasters uh, that that are in this list. But it's definitely going to be a great ride, a great addition uh, to uh, to Disney's Hollywood Studios and. <clears throat> The only one from Hollywood Studios in the list is from is that right? The Monsters Incorporated, uh, bringing up the whole Monsters Land. 
and that's going to be nice. We, as of right now, we still don't know where it's going to go. Uh, some people fear it'll be in the Muppets area. Some people fear it'll be in the launch bay. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, it, we'll find out soon enough. Number two. So number two is Cars Land, and more importantly, Radiator Springs. And the, the Cars Land of Radiator Springs, it's if you've ever been to Disneyland, you understand that everybody wants that ride over in Florida. And it's basically you have two cars and you're going over this majestic from the actual Radiator Springs. You're having a race uh, and it's two cars and they race and it's randomized. So there's always a different winner. There's an actual race. I mean, the cars don't go ridiculously fast, but they go fast enough to some really cool themed areas. Things happen to your vehicle. You explore things. Uh, you meet some of the characters from the Cars movies and then you make it to the finish line. It's a fun experience. This is going to be that, but it's going to be an entirely different theme. Again, they're trying to make things a little different, and they're trying to make it fit with the theme, which this is going to go in Frontierland. So if you know, if you see where Tom Sawyer Island is, if you see the Rivers of America where the riverboat goes in, all that's going to be filled out. And while I know a lot of people are going to be upset about it, it's very different. Uh, uh, Tom Sawyer Island, which maybe greets hundreds of visitors a day um, at most, uh, to a ride that will be satisfying thousands of people, uh, you know, maybe like one, two thousand an hour, uh, but it'll be uh, on a daily basis, tens of thousands of visitors. So it's definitely going to be an improvement in capacity and definitely excitement. So this is going to take out that whole area. There's going to be another ride, and I'll get to that shortly, but uh, the main ride is basically the Radiator Springs kind of mechanism where it's two cars racing, except it's more set in the frontier land uh, section of the world, not necessarily, you know, in, in Route 66. So it's really interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, the cars are going to look a little different, at least according to the concept art. It's going to be pretty cool. Number two is – oh, no, that was number two. Uh, so I, I'm done with number two. Let me talk about the honorable mentions here. So I was going to mention some cool things that are happening uh, beyond that. Um, so in 2026, so uh, Star Tours is going to be getting a new simulation mission. So the Mandalorian uh, movie is coming out and in 2026, and with that, they're going to be incorporating – basically a Mandalorian skin to the actual ride. So if you've gone there from the beginning, it's, it's incorporated other missions as the new Star Wars movies came out. Uh, now, as some of the shows have come out uh, on, on Disney+, Plus. now you're going to get one basically on the Mandalorian movie that's coming out. So Mandalorian and Grogu are going to be uh, possible as one of the missions you can take uh, on the Star Tours attraction. Whether it'll be all, all of them will set to the Mandalorian, it'll be just a randomized within the actual set remains to be seen, but that's going to be cool. And yes, Cars Land, it's not just the Radiator Springs uh, simulation adjusted, f tweaked for the Frontierland uh, setting that it will be in. It's also going to be, there's going to be a family-friendly ride, they said. Uh, if you get into the Cars Land at Disneyland on the other coast, you know, there has always been uh, kind of like a fun little, you know, low capacity, but, you know, for younger riders, uh, for them to get in on the fun. And uh, there's also going to be a new nighttime parade uh, at the Magic Kingdom. That's going to happen in 2025. And a, a pirate themed lounge is going into the Magic Kingdom as well as a – that was announced. But well, the new thing was announced that there's also going to be a more traditional lounge going into Epcot Spaceship Earth. And those two lounges will be opening in 2025. So now number one is Villain's Land. I, I know I'm not the only one that for years, uh, for decades actually, wished Disney would open up a Villain's theme park uh, for a more, you know, kind of like a, you know, put some more s spice and sassy and be, be able to be a little more daring uh, than the tra traditional uh, Disney parks. Disney's not interested in doing that. And I think if you put all these eight rides, all these eight rides and the honorable mentions into its own theme park, that would have been a great complete theme park, everything that they're announcing for the next five years in its own theme park. But I think Disney realizes it's a lot better, and they have the capacity at the parks and land to expand within the parks if they can increase their attendance by as much as they would with a fifth theme park spread out amongst the four parks with more capacity in the parks. I think this is the right move for them logistically, but you may disagree, but uh, that's how I see it. Let's talk Villains Land. So this is probably the last one that's going to open. This will probably break ground towards the end. Uh, of, 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 the, of the five years. So imagine maybe 2029, 20, 2028, they'll start breaking ground. So maybe this is the one that doesn't open in the next five years. Wouldn't surprise me if it's a 2030 opening. But the neat thing, maybe even 2031, who knows? The neat thing about this is this is going to be back beyond, like behind where Thunder Mountain is, behind where the Haunted Mansion is. It has a big amount of space that can work there. And with that, uh, so sort of behind where the Cars Land will be, the new Cars Land in Frontier, Frontier Land, uh, what's going to happen back there is basically an island theme to the villains. And there are two rides. They mentioned two rides. They didn't ask, they didn't delve too much into what the two rides will be. I'm lumping them into one section here because it's just uh, until we know more, I can't say that. But if you zoom in on the concept art, 
there is clearly a roller coaster with some spiny track, uh, you know, up in the cliffs and the mountains. Uh, and definitely going to be an encounter with one or if not more of the villains in that ride. Uh, I imagine the other ride will probably be more of a traditional, uh, you know, ride through, you know, kind of a dark ride, maybe more family friendly uh, for people that can't ride the coaster. We'll see how Disney goes about it. But definitely Villain's Land is going to be a great place. And that's it. That is the top eight things coming to Disney World in the next five years.